I hope you're enjoying our edition today of MusicArtistForYou.com. We've got another artist coming up. You know, some people are just literally born to be in country music. This guy's grandfather played bluegrass music. His dad traveled with some of the major Opry acts and even played on the Grand Ole Opry. And here's Sean taking it all to a whole new generation. And we're glad to have him today. I want you to watch this. The music of Sean Hammonds here on MusicArtistForYou.com. There was a cloud of dust behind that old Chevrolet All of us dressed up on a Sunday morning In Tennessee, going to church with my family Dad would point at something round every bend Tell us what it meant to mom and him Everything that we drove by Was another little piece of their life All the things they did together Would be right there forever Now life goes past too fast Eight lanes of blacktop Lost on a highway that don't stop Sean Hammonds here on MusicArtistForYou.com. You know, at one time, Sean was doing so well as a songwriter, he thought about giving up performing. We're mighty glad he didn't. We're glad to have him here today. And he's got another song for you coming up right after this. Outlaw is not a choice, it's a way of life. It's an attitude. Express yourself with Outlaw Wear jeans, t-shirts, and accessories. Outlaw Wear, for those who need to push the limits. Available at www.shopoutlawwear.com. Are you a music artist or songwriter that just can't get a break? then MusicArtistForYou.com is your answer. MusicArtistForYou.com is a totally new way to promote you and your band. 
With our streaming radio stations, online television shows, and major sponsor promotions, MusicArtistForYou.com is your solution to a successful music career. Anyone can sell their music on iTunes or other music services, but how is anyone going to know you're there? So log on to www.musicartistforyou.com to experience music like you've never experienced it before. Tell you how the stars lined up We wound up There's too much stuff in this world That I can't explain When I try to wrap my mind around The here and now The why and how we happen I'd go insane Sometimes I wish I had a clue why things work the way they do Maybe when it comes to me and you Girl, I know Did I do right to hold you On nights like this There's so much I don't understand Somewhere there's a bigger plan God knows just what that is Sometimes I wish I had a clue Do why things work the way they do Baby, when it comes to me and you Girl, I know enough to know Sean Hammonds right here on musicartistforyou.com. He's got one more song for us, and then we're going to sit down and talk with him in just a moment right here. Sound Kitchen Studios is the Southeast's most prestigious recording and production facility. All of the studios in this 19,000 square foot facility are internationally recognized for their great sound. So it's no surprise that the biggest names in the entertainment industry use the Sound Kitchen. Artists spanning all music genres have recorded at the Sound Kitchen. Elton John, Vince Gill, B.B. Winans, Bruce Springsteen, Safety Suit, Saliva, Allison Chains, Dolly Parton, Hank Williams Jr., Michael W. Smith, 
Trace Atkins, Jewel, as well as thousands of indie artists. No matter your location, the Sound Kitchen is the perfect site for song demos, complete album projects, artist showcases, television tapings, and video productions. If you can't travel to the kitchen, ask about our Skype sessions. Work with Nashville's A Session players from the comfort of your home. This amazing studio complex offers an unparalleled VIP setting. And if you want to throw a private or corporate party, the kitchen has you covered with personal chefs and two full-service kitchens, private lounges, and conference areas. Remember, whether you are signed to a label or just beginning your journey as an artist, it's all about your music and your legacy. So get on over to the Sound Kitchen and eat music. I'd sell this old guitar my grandpa gave to me to put food on the table and I guarantee I'll always make you proud you chose me to be your man there's nothing I won't do keep that gold ring on your hand whatever it takes whatever you it takes If I need to work three jobs When the baby comes I'll roll up my sleeves and get it done I'd be blisters on my hands But I'll never once complain Well, you've heard the music. Now let's meet the man. Sean Hammonds and I are going to sit down and have a little chat here on musicartistforyou.com. You don't want to miss this. And you just saw a great performance from Sean Hammonds, and he's with us right now. How are you, my friend? If I was any better, I'd be two people. 
That's some good stuff he played. Thanks, man. Enjoyed that it. very much. We were just sitting here talking. You're from uh, up in northern Kentucky, mm -hmm. and and I know you're into traditional country music, but the first thing when you said northern Kentucky, I said, well, there's got to be some bluegrass there. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, you, you did have a lot of bluegrass in your Yeah, I mean, uh, the first records I got to hear, my grandfather, who uh, was a guitar player and a banjo player and a dobro player, he um, introduced me to uh, Bill Monroe right away. And I remember the first record I heard, though, was a Jimmy Martin record. Yeah. You know, so my grandpa you know, got my feet wet in bluegrass, and, and my dad was a country singer also, so kind of so, raised in it. So, you know, I, I tell people I've been singing since I was a fetus. <laughs> well, you, your first, you were telling me the first trip to the Opry was the old Ryman, mm -hmm. and you were like, was, one year old. Yeah, I was about, yeah, probably about two years old, and uh, I remember my my grandmother still got pictures of uh, Barbara Fairchild holding me backstage. You mm -hmm. know, as my dad used to play drums. Uh, moved down here in about '72, and he played drums on the Opry. Played for uh, Barbara Fairchild, and, mm -hmm. and you know a few artists like Connie Smith. He played with Connie Smith back in the day. Well, so was your dream always to grow up and be a country music star? Well, you know, I didn't know. I you know, after about I was about five years old, we moved back to Northern Kentucky. And I was just a regular kid. I was an athlete, played mm -hmm. football. I, you know, had dreams of probably playing pro football. Figured out I wasn't fast enough. I was a little, you know, too small. And uh, but I played music since I was five. Mm -hmm. So and I played in the clubs and the bars with my father and played drums, and then sang all the time. And uh, I guess around seventeen, eighteen, I was playing drums for my dad. And this guy saw me backstage, or actually playing drums and singing. And he brought me out front. He said, "You don't need to be back here. You need to be fronting the band." So. I guess I fronted his band until I turned 21, and as soon as I turned 21, I headed to Nashville and I ain't never been back. I just go home to visit now. You finally got a record deal, mm -hmm. get your first single out, everything, and uh, you know, I've, I've seen this happen to other artists, and it, you know, you're finally to that point, and the Dad Blame record company went belly up. Yep, it was uh, Country Thunder. Uh, it was a great experience, because I mean, I got to do a lot of radio, I got to do a radio tour. Uh, I got to play on the same stage with Alan Jackson and, uh, you know, Heidi Newfield and Sugar Land. I did the Country Thunder USA tours. And uh, so I got to play. I got to do the, the, the coolest thing I probably got to do was hang out in Memphis at the St. Jude Radiothon. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I got to go to that hospital, and that's a heartbreaker. Yeah, um, and them sure. kids are happy down there. It's an incredible thing, the St. Jude thing. But uh, did a lot of radio stuff like that. So I had a good time. It was a good experience, too. But you always wish, you know, I wish I could have just kept going, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you're still going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going no matter <laughs> you're what. You're a young man. <laughs> now, how, how do you square up? I know, that given this traditional country music background, and you said some of your heroes were Buck Owens and mm -hmm. Wynn Stewart and folks yeah. like that. And that's ex not exactly what's being cut in mainstream country these mm -hmm. days. How do, how do you square off with that? Well, I've been writing a lot with a lot of different people, uh, David Lee Murphy, uh, Mike Schelling, and some other guys, and uh, we're writing some, some edgier melodies. Mm -hmm. Of course, my singing is a pretty, uh, you're like, man, it sounds like almost like George Jones singing a, a rock and roll beat, but, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's working, and uh, a lot of people are digging my stuff when I'm out playing shows right now. I'm getting a lot, of, a lot of fan bases building. I play a lot up in the Ohio area in Cincinnati. In that area, Northern Kentucky area, right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I remember doing a big show. They were playing my record a lot down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, and I did a show with um, Billy Currington. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I got a great response down there to my stuff that I was doing, and played a couple of the songs here that I played there. You know, so so I don't know. I'm just I keep singing. They can't make me stop. Billy is such a great artist. I, I love really that good. song he had out. The people are crazy. Yes, man. Well, who wrote that? My buddy Bobby Brown. That's Braddock. right, man. He so what else you need to know? That's right. He wrote that. He stopped loving her today, right? Yeah. He man, wrote D I V O R C. He wrote a bunch go. of stuff. He yeah. one of my favorites was I don't remember loving you. Remember that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. John Conley song. Mm -hmm, sure do. Bobby's a little off center. Yeah, he, and he knows that. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> I love Bobby. Bobby told me once. I tell you this funny story. We were backstage at the Opry and. Uh, it was me and Bill Anderson, and Bobby came up to us, and he was very serious. And, you know, Bobby's got a little stammer, and he says, I, I want you boys to know something. And we leaned in. What is it? Bobby was afraid somebody was ill or whatever. He says, I was out in the rain the other day in a parking lot, and I called Dean Miller. And I said, Dean, I really need to talk to your daddy, Roger Miller, but I can't, so I'm going to tell you. Do you know that the last word in Kroger is Roger? <laughs> You'll never see the Kroger sign again and, and not think of that. That's funny. Well, that's but like that's the, the way Bobby's mind works, yeah. is what I'm getting back to. Well, you know, speaking of Roger Miller, I remember he wrote that the last word in Lonesome is yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's 
He was way before his time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the last word in Kroger is Roger. Yeah. I'll never forget that. <laughs> so what's your plans for 2010? Well, you know, we're, we're out there playing right now. We're getting in the studio, uh, writing a whole lot. We're going to get in the studio and cut some stuff and uh, shoot for another, you know, deal that, that they can get us on mainstream radio and get us out there and get us to the people. Also, um, doing things like this is really helping us get out there to the people yeah. also. Uh, now, you know, it's with the independent labels are doing a lot better than they ever have. Yeah. So a lot of artists now, and with the Internet, are being able to get out there and play and make a living now because of things like what we're doing here. Sure, you know, and, and uh, I think that's uh, that's given even uh, as you say independent artists mm -hmm. a, a better shot at it. And the thing the fans love about it is they can communicate directly with the artist. That's right. You get in a chat room, or you've got mm -hmm. your message center, you know, and uh, artists are even saying, "Listen to these songs. You tell us what the next single's going to be." I, you know, I agree 100% that they should pick the single and not the record label. Yeah. This is my opinion. But, um, you know, the fans, you know, it's always in country music is always because of fanfare. Mm -hmm. It's always, the, the artists have always been closer to their fans than any mm -hmm. other genre of music I've ever uh, heard of. Because they're, you know, they're always, I mean, you see the same people fanfare all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're like buddies and hugging the artist, you yeah. know. They, they see them all the time, you know. Well, I think the internet has, has opened that possibility to, a lot of to be close to your fans even more. Mm -hmm. Well, good yeah. luck to you. Thank you, man. I appreciate John it. Thank you. you did a great job here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, sing me some more, George, anytime you want. No, I will. Even if you put a little rock in it. I'll do it. I ain't scared. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, buddy.